Good morning. It's Tuesday. Two for Tuesday. Second day of the week. I have already boot camped. It's pancake day today. So I am going to make some pancakes or something that resembles pancakes. I'm going to make the zip. One banana, two egg pancakes with some oats. Is it one egg, two bananas? Or one banana. Oh yeah. I actually really like doing these pancakes. One banana, two egg pancakes because um, I wanted to have, wanted to feel a little bit more fest, well, enjoy the day, the festivities of the day. But um, yeah, I don't want to eat proper pancakes. I'm going to make him some pancakes as well, so... Right. La 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 la! One. He's on a granola hype at the moment. So he was a bit sad. I was like, no, we're having pancakes. But he doesn't have any granola, that's the problem. Oh, I know what I could use. <laughs> yeah, that's half a cup of oats. Ta -da. I want to use my new frying pan. This is a ninja frying pan. I got it from John Lewis the other day when I was using a jo my John Lewis voucher that I got for my birthday and Christmas present. And I'm really excited because it's super non-stick. Ninja non-stick. Well, thank God for a minute then I just thought, oh no, it's not induction. First world fucking problems, hey? Okay, I've got lots to do today and I've decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna spend forever making breakfast because it's pancake day. Fuck the to-do list. Typical, typical me. Some of it's important, some of it's not as important. I've got a piercing booking at 11, but I have got, I say I've got lots to do. I think it just feels like I've got a lot to do because I'm trying to fit it all in in the morning. It's not too bad. I don't know to put the bananas. I'll put them in there. Thanks. Hello. Bless you. I'm scared. Oh, I'm using my new ninja frying pan. Look at it. Whoa. Super non-stick. I've got to register it because it serves with a 10 year guarantee. Anything sticks to that pan, I can get a new pan. What? You keep fighting? A parking fine. Oh, I know. <laughs> I will do it today. You will? Yes. And he paid a pile of let this is a spatula. Oh, it is so non-stick. That's amazing. Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> ah! I literally throws it out at me sometimes. What a great pan this is. Okay, the last pancake. I didn't realise that this vlog was gonna be being up a frying pan, but oh my God. You caught me back for guys. Ninja. Matchmaker, matchmaker, find me a match. Oh, there is actual pancake syrup. What are you gonna do? Shoot me. Bye, beer boy. You gotta pick what you want on your pancakes. See, Sweet Freedom sent me all their syrups. Bless them. So, maybe I should try the pancake one. Ah! Ah! Oh no! What did I do that for? It's really runny. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh no! It's all on my arm. Why am I an idiot? Yep, that'll do. Quick turnaround, getting ready, and chucking loads of stuff in a suitcase because I'm running away. No, I'm filming some outfit stuff today in the studio and I didn't know what. Well, I had an idea, but I was like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna overpack. Um, but we've got everything, dogs, suitcase, hut lunch bag, and I've got my handbag with my laptop and camera stuff in. Quite over encumbered today. <laughs> um, but I'm just gonna drop these bits in. And then I'm gonna go and get my piercing, get that out the way. And then crack on. Got quite a lot to do. Sort the vintage stuff out, pack the rest of my orders. I went in last night, had a sudden burst of energy about half four. 
because I was working from home yesterday editing video stuff. And then I went, I'm going to go in and had loads of orders to pack. So I just went and did them. And there's a few more left over, so I'll do them. Oh, girls, you're right in the way. Come here. Dropped everything off. Nope. Stay there. I'll be back soon. I see you in a minute. I'll be back soon. I'm gonna go have my ears punctured. Be good. Be good. I'm not really looking forward to having my ears gonna be in pain for my forever. <laughs> I only feel like this one that I got done in the summer, my conch has only just stopped hurting. Well, I've changed the piercing in it now. The ears are such a bugger, but they look so good. Pick a bit of jewelry for the top one. I've already got that one sorted. I'm doing two, so we'll see what they've got. I'm probably not gonna go for like an expensive one, I'll just go for a basic one. See what there's, see what's on offer. And then I can get properly ready. It was uh, the pancake took too long. And then we just sat around chatting and then it was like, oh, we need to leave. We were really bad for that. Whoopsie. And then come do the wash up and then oh, just get sort of just distracted by each other, but it's okay um, because we're also good at putting rockets up each other's asses. So get this done. I need to pop to Primark and um, the card factory to get some balloons. And then, um, and then I shall, um, yeah, put my makeup on, do my hair, film, bulk film for a few hours and edit that, get the border. So, we'll do some little dots first, okay? Yeah. Um, are you wanting to put another ring in your helix eventually, do you think? So this is the helix, yeah? Yeah, okay. the highest one. Yes. Yeah. I don't know, I, like, do I, I do like a hoop, but it does look cute when you have like a cool stud in it as well. Yeah, so. I mean, you can, you can leave it open, so it doesn't really matter what you end up doing. Yeah. Um, but we'll kind of position it so that either way, you'll be... Yeah, all right. Just oh, thank you. The jacket is so... Oh, thanks. It's my little thing Mazar for jacket. I'm really, really feel naughty, but I love wearing a tracksuit at the minute, and I'm like, I look like a slob, but then Aww. I'm so comfortable. But I was like, right, if I wear my jacket and put a big old necklace on, it's all right. <laughs> I've styled it out. Yeah, I reckon it's going to be kind of a little bit of cartilage maybe, but mostly loads, but you'll be fine. <laughs> hey, um, okay. I'm going to get you the mirror as well. Okay. So if you want to grab that for me, have a little look. Um, obviously, you can move stuff around as much as you want. So if you do want to move anything, if you want to bring that helix a little bit lower, we can as well. Ja, no, that, that's, that's cool. That one there. Yeah. What well, did I want it higher? I mean, we can go higher if you want. The only thing to think about is if we go it. too much higher, when you put a ring in it, it's then going to be kind of upward yeah. rather than kind of hanging down to the side. All right. Sense. We'll keep that one there. But I was thinking this one more. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be carlage isn't it? It's going to yeah. be a right old I mean, bastard. there's not too much room on the back, to be fair, because oh. kind of mid-helix is a little bit more anatomy dependent just because of where the conch kind of attaches at the back. No, that, that will be all right then, actually, because then... then if I've got a little sank there and then another hoop there, I'm just trying to think that will look balanced, I reckon. I think so. Yeah, because this one looks well busy, which is cool because I've cheated this <laughs> one with a double ring there. But, um, that's it? Is that just one? That's one, isn't it? Oh, but it's nice. a double, double it doodah. Well cute. Yeah, now they're all healed, it doesn't really matter what I put in it now. But yeah, fuck it, let's yeah. just do it. So, is that Florence in the machine? Yes, it is. Oh, cool! <laughs> Is that from her new album, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her new album is everything. Picks me up, puts me oh down. <laughs> Hundred times a day. Yeah, it's free. It's the best one ever. Isn't it? It's a good so old good. boogie. Have you seen her live before? Yes. Oh, it's so uh, she's just isn't she just magical? Right? It's incredible. She's she's so best. she is one of those. She's got an aura that oh, she's just like oh. Wow. <laughs> on its side? On your back. On my back? Yeah, and then you turn your head and look this way. Okay, um, I'll take them off as I'm well. I'm just going to raise you down. Raise you down. Thanks, raise me down. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't need wee myself, because I do need a wee, but I'll be all right. I'm a big girl. <laughs> cool, so what do you want to start with? It's completely up to Whatever the, the worst one, what do you think I would mean, be the helix, most painful? The helix will probably be a little, little bit sharper. Yeah, I remember being that being a bit spicy when I first ever got it done. Yeah, should we go yeah. Through this first? Fuck it, go, yeah. Okay. What are we gonna do? We're just gonna line things up first. Okay? Good. No, I'm not. So, nice deep breath in for me. And back. Ooh, that was a beat. How was that? Fine. You will just pop your jewellery in. Thank you. I love this piece so much. <laughs> Wait, which one's that? That's my diamond, isn't it? Yeah. 
Oh, fucking hell, yeah. Okay. There we go. <gasps> brave. Yeah, that is nice. It looked really nice in the conch as well. It's so pretty. It just sat so good. So, we're just going to squeeze that nice and tight. Okay. Cool. Right, do you want to go straight onto the load and get that one done? Yeah, it's just it. Let's, I can go for it. This one should be easy. So, nice deep breath in for me. And out. Amazing. How was that one? Actually, I'd say that that I was worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But okay. I feel like second one always tends to be a little bit pinchier. Yeah. Thank you very much, so madam. Pop the front on there and give you a big queen. Yes. Smash it. Have you still got um, oh, yes. the spray? I got it all, yeah. Amazing. Nice little jet wash. <laughs> so same as normal, so just morning and evening. Yeah. Um, front and back, you can pop some on a cotton pad. Um, really gently, give things a little clean. Any kind of crusties or scabs or anything like that, obviously that's normal. Just try to leave it alone. Don't twist it, exactly. even though you get the bit the edge to twist it all the yeah. time. I suck at that, honestly. <laughs> yeah, but I think if I twist it and the crusties go, that I'm doing it a favour. You no, know? you're ripping all the tiny scabs. Oh, OK, I won't do it then. <laughs> Sorry, if that's the science, then I won't. You're fine. Yeah, try to leave them alone. And then, <laughs> only other thing, the bars for these are a little bit longer, especially for the helix. So give it roughly six weeks, pop back, we'll shorten them for you. Sick. That's really important, just so the angles don't change. Oh yeah, I won't touch them. I mean, I didn't touch the other one. I could, actually, I think you pierced my conch in June. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Gorgeous, there we go. That's just good. hopeful. Ever, ever since one of my friends from uni fainted when he sat up after he got his, no, his thingy tank pierced, I was like, that don't ever happen to me. <laughs> this is what we're saying. Adorable. I love that. Oh, beautiful. Smashed it. They weren't too bad, right? No, they were fine. Just in pre nark I'm looking for something to wear for the intro for my little reel I'm making. Some pants, some like lingerie. Because I got rid of my lingerie. Didn't fit me nice. Oh my god, I love pajamas. Where are the pants? Oh, there. Yeah. They're over here. Oh. Just want some pants. Lion King pajamas. Oh my god, I would have totally worn this when I was like a child. I want it. But I'm a grown up now. So I'm not going to buy a Lion King pajama set. What am I look? It can't be too raunch because I don't want to get banned. But all these are quite nice. Oh. A night, some a nighty, a red nighty. Mm. Corset. I don't, I, can't buy. I don't even know my bra size anymore. What am I? I just want to wear this shit. This is what I'm about. Seamless wireless. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. This is these are the pants I buy. If anyone ever asks me what knickers do you wear, it's these. These twin sets, six quid in Primark, all the time. I've got the goods, I've got a little corset, and then I bought some baskets from the home section because I realised when I went in the cupboards in the office today, there is nowhere to put actual food, so it's just hanging around. Anyway, I'm gonna go in the card factory now. To find me some balloons. I don't know why I keep talking like I'm Scottish. Oh, there's loads. Giant. How big is that? That's massive. They had some pre-made, like, um, like, 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 on uh, a, a bouquet. What would you call it? Like a, a, a cluster of balloons, a, an ensemble. Anyway, they were like on display, and they were like, you can take me home for five pounds or ten pounds. So I just got a couple, and then an old man went to me in the shop. Oh. Careful you don't take off. I went, I hope I do. <laughs> Get away from here. Take me somewhere hot. There, look. Whee! I'm gonna show Jack my new ears. And my new lingerie. Ooh. I'm gonna have my lunch now, before I start doing, it's half 12 now. I went on to the market and got the dog some things for, to keep here. Chicken sticks, poo bags, strips, and then the most disgusting thing ever, but they'll love it. Two 
throats. I'm sorry to any vegetarians or vegans that will be watching, but it's neat. that is the way that the, this is like, this is gross. That's too big for your mouth, Dee. Go on, Lou. You've got to take it. Take it. You're trying to figure out how to take it, aren't you? I'm going to put it there. Ugh. And then I just picked up these baskets from Primark to go in the... Um... Ugh! Do not eat it on my coat. Um, these little wire bar, five pounds each. So good to go in the cupboards up here for things like dog treats and stuff. Because they're just open and can just rolling around. I don't want that. I just need two more for that shelf if I, well, I don't need them, but in terms of for symmetry, <laughs> then you already, or I just do that. I filmed my Valentine's reel and I'm just packing up my bits because I didn't get the second one done because always things always just take me longer than I want them to. Then I had to do a sponsored video as well. It's all right. So I'm just going to pack my clothes up. Take a moment. I'm just going to go do it there in my spare room. So that's a nice spot also for shooting things. Good morning. I got up and boot camped. I'm on my own again this weekend because, well, for the next five days, because my boyfriend's gone back to work. Well, he's always working. He's gone back to his studio because he's on round two of recording this album. Fine, I really like my own space. I love him being here, but I also don't mind it when he's not here. I went to Asda on the way home and I picked up some things. I got myself a pizza, oh no, I squashed it. A Pizza Express Hawaiian pizza, which I'm going to have half of and then make a big salad to go with it. I treated myself to some, my favorite, the pepeta. I bought some naked bars and some full oat bars because we've run out of snack treats in the treat basket and some trek. I'm trying to lower my sugar consumption and I was buying mini like Aero Mint bubbles and Twixes and stuff, which is, I guess is fine, but I just, I realized that I've got, I just, my sweet tooth is too sweet. So I'm just like, no, let's try and go for some lower sugar alternatives. Fajita mix. This is just because I was, I was lazy and I was like, you know, I'm just going to buy that. I'm going to cook that and I'm going to serve it up with some salad. Red Bull. I've got some oat milk. The salad. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, baby. You right? Hello. Are you? How are you doing? You good? Yeah, are you? Oh. Yeah, I, I just rang you and it, it, it never answered. It, 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 like, never made any noise. And then it said it had been answered for 30 seconds. So I probably just left you a voice note for 30 seconds saying, hello, hello. Cool, I love a voicemail note. I've got an idea. So I am always trying to master making an omelette, right? Because my grill, if my grill was all right, I'd just grill the top of it. And likewise, I'm not very good at doing things in pans because I get it wrong. So I'm going to ex do an experiment, right? I got this silicone mould thing, the air fryer from Lakeland. And, you know, you fry an omelette in a frying pan. So one would assume that you could fry it in the air fryer in, an, in a dish. So I'm going to make an omelette and see if it works. So I want to have in the omelette some tomato and some onion. Just a little bit of onion, not a lot. So I'm going to actually fry that in a pan first to soften it. And then I'm going to add it all to this thing. So I've set the air fryer to 200 for seven minutes, right? I don't know if that's going to be enough. I've never made this before. So whilst that does its thing, I'm just going to soften the tomato and the onion. I have mixed my eggs and a little dash of oat milk. I don't know if that's weird. Obviously, I don't have cow's milk, so measure out 30 grams. That's better. Put that in there. Let's wait. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> oh no. It's still not cooked. The top's cooked, but the bottom's not cooked. Put the bottom. By the way, Danny's just turned up. Not, no, not unannounced. I knew she was coming. <laughs> but, um, so, I tried to get it out after seven minutes. The oh. bottom was still not cooked. That looks nice. Do you, have you flipped that or is that just... No, I sort of wiggled it. And when I realised it wasn't cooked on the bottom, I just kind of wiggled it back in again. Um, this has been in for seven plus six minutes. I think that's looking cooked, you know. What I'll do... That's 13 minutes that's been in there. Yeah. Was it completely raw? I said across this quiche then. Ah. Okay. All right. All, I think that worked. <gasps> it's cooked. Yeah. That is two eggs, a dash of oat milk, 30 grams of feta cheese, and I basically quickly fried up the tomato and the onion on a pan for like a couple of minutes just to soften it. Put a bit of salt and pepper on it. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Is it ready? We'll see. Oh yeah, he's cooked. He's cooked. Well done. I'm gonna take a picture of that. I'm gonna try it. Because yeah. Baker's, Baker's mum gave us some of those. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I literally, I'll just uh -huh. use my air fryer to make stuff crispy. What am I gonna use those for? Oh, uh, did it? It worked. It technically worked. Hooray. That means in that 13 minutes, I could go and do something. Look. Burpees. Burpe clean something. I don't know. You can do this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Yeah. Do uh, what was that thing that went viral? That was like, if you do this for seven minutes a day, you'll go. You'll get a six pack in a week. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, where she go? <laughs> Would you like a drink? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm just getting ready, and um. God, I have to be honest with you, right? I have not been feeling great the last two weeks in the old noggin, and I'm conflicted. Is this something that I talk about online or is this something that I keep to myself? Reasons for wanting to talk about it online. I think that when you are feeling down and you're going for a bad patch, you often, it often feels like you're the only person in the world feeling like this, which makes you feel isolated and it, ultimately makes you feel worse. And you feel like a drag. You feel like you're bringing everyone else around. You feel like you're ex you know, exuding negative energy and that you're just a dark cloud and no one wants to be around that. And obviously I've been good during this week, but between that has been me being in terrible, terrible moods. And the reasons why I feel like I, I don't want to talk about it is on a personal level, like, I'm an online content creator, YouTuber, influencer, whatever you want to call me. That's my job. Um, I still find that really fucking weird to say that. You know, without beating around the bush, I have a job that lots of people want. You know, a lot of people dream to be in the position that I'm in. I get icky when I talk about stuff like this because it almost feels like you, you live such a great life, a privileged life, a good life. It almost feels like I'm, I, I shouldn't be, I can't, I'm not allowed to be sad or not happy um, because of that like comparison, you know, how others have it a lot worse, which I know they probably do. But then it's, okay, well, I'll just keep my mouth shut. I won't say anything. Comparing others' situations to your own as opposed to, to, to as a way of going, cheer the fuck up, like people have got it worse than you, is just never gonna work. That's why I feel weird talking about it online, or I feel like I shouldn't. I feel like, oh, no, I'll just keep my mouth. And also don't want, to feel like a Debbie Downer, but I'm all about honesty and being upfront, oversharing and sharing my life as it is. And this is my life as it is. So where did it stem from? I think I noticed it a couple of weeks ago when a couple of things that happened in my super personal life, <laughs> not the personal life that I <laughs> am comfortable sharing, that um, I think caused me uh, like a spike in anxiety and emotion. I'm, I'm a very deep feeler, uh, very, I'm quite sensitive. Certain things have like a lasting effect on me because I, you know, I, I feel things deeply and I'm, I get quite repeating myself emotional. I think that that was one of those things that was like almost like 
my emotions were spilling over, like those things just sort of affected me more than I would have liked them to have. I know I felt a little bit grumpy over my birthday because I had PMS and that was to be expected, just a bit like, Phew. and um, but those felt like very normal grumpy feelings because I'm used to that every single month, but it just didn't go away. And I just felt a bit, I've just been feeling a bit, Phew. And then what happens as a result, having a low mood then interrupts and changes your way of thinking. And a lot of my thoughts have been quite intrusive, very negative, very self-reflective in a negative way and very unkind. I have felt like I can't be bothered to get up in the morning to go to my exercise classes. When I've been at the exercise class, I've been feeling like it's hard work. I don't want to be here. I'm gonna burst into tears at any moment. I have not been finding joy in the things that usually would bring me joy and satisfaction and, you know, getting that rush of excitement and like dopamine kick that I get out of doing things. And so therefore, you know, to keep spirits high and, the, you know, the things that I would normally do to make me feel good haven't been serving me in that well. It's been like, what do I do then? Resorted to like sitting on the sofa and wallowing, which is probably like the most wrong thing that I could do with my time. A lot of the time it feels like brain fog. I can't articulate what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling it. I just feel an overall feeling of sadness. But in, on a day like today where I feel like more better and sprightly, um, I have a little bit more perspective and I, I can sort of understand my thoughts better. I think it's interesting to understand and acknowledge where the negative thoughts flourish and manifest and why and where they come from. Mine has always been around feeling like I have a purpose and like I'm productive. And a lot of the time when I feel down, one of the key thoughts that I have about myself is, what am I doing? What the fuck am I? You don't do anything and you, you offer nothing. What is this job? This feels so uh, like up in the air. I can't picture what I do as a tangible thing. Because having a job, having your form of income be from being a person, essentially. My content, the way I make money is just through being me. I film my life, I film the things that I do and think, I put them on the internet, it has an audience, people watch it, people take like suck it up, brands like it, they pay me to do stuff for them. That's the way I make money. And I find that so bizarre. <laughs> My thing is me, essentially. Like, yes, I put effort into making it look nice and editing things well and making it entertaining, but essentially I am the product and I still, even after 12 years of being online, cannot get my head around that. Like if I was making a music video for somebody, I would plan, make the video, deliver the video, and that is a product I have produced for somebody being the product is so strange. And there's obviously the fear of longevity and um, calling it work still feels weird. Going to work, doing my work. There's also quite a lot of like, a lot of people don't like influencers or content creators. There's a lot of like negative, I know there's a lot of them are fucking idiots. But generally speaking, it feels a bit icky when you talk about being one and considering like editing a vlogger's work. Like that is, that gives me the And then obviously I have had numerous times in my life from either ex-partners, family members, or even just people commenting uh, on it not being a real job. Like, I should be grateful. You don't work hard. All of these things in a sense of undeservingness. After a while, that starts to really get to you and penetrate you into the sense of that you feel like, I feel like I need to compensate those, comp I need to, f I feel like I've got now developed this toxic relationship with being productive because I feel like if I'm always productive or seemingly busy, 
or, or you know, seem to be busy all the time and I work really hard and I take on loads of things, that will compensate that you don't work hard, you don't deserve this, what do you even do, that's not a job, like I've got something to prove. I am so aware that that is unhealthy and that is no one else's business what I do of their mind and it came up in therapy so many times and my therapist actually said to me like no one else is Helen Anderson no one else can do what you do no one knows what it's like to be Helen Anderson and therefore they can't comment on you know they couldn't do what you do essentially they couldn't be you because <laughs> you are unique you are successful because you are you and that is why people watch you because you are you no one else can be you and I was like I know and I'm still working on that but when I feel in a low mood, my thoughts immediately go to, who are you? You're not good enough. Who are you? What are you doing? Why, why do you even bother? You need to do something which, you need a job which you get something, a result out of, or a product out of, or something to prove, something to show for. You should quit now and become a teacher or a mentor or whatever it is because what you do means nothing. You know, and it's also the uncertainty of being self-employed, the vulnerability. Also another thing which came to my mind is, and I've realized, I think about where I was last year, like the entire last year, I see all of last year, like some really inspirational movie trailer of woman finds herself and thrives and lives her best life. And it's all like shiny and flashy and exciting. And I think of what I'm doing now and I'm like, oh, it's not so exciting because the beginning of this year has been really slow. I've not got as much stuff done yet as I was hoping I would. I've been doing the 10 week shred and probably not applying myself as much as I should have been. And I'm not really losing any weight. I wanted to lose a few more pounds. I've not really lost anything. I'm feeling a bit of a letdown for that. <laughs> and I said to my friend Danny, I went, I just don't feel like I'm thriving at the moment. And then we just sort of like said, yeah, you, you can't be constantly on an upward trajectory because <laughs> there's just not, sustainable like yes I, I acknowledge that like I know that my expectations of myself is I am I, got, I did really well and I'm like I, I was on a high like last year but it's all right to stay at a constant level I shouldn't keep expecting myself to just keep going up 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 and up because what's that about I'll end up in I'll end up in space oh there's been a crash oh my god incredibly self-critical and hard on myself the past two weeks I think that some negative, something negative, or something, something sparked some emotions which opened a can of worms. The thing is, I'm so self-aware and through skills that I've learned through self-analysis that I learned in therapy and also having incredible friends and an incredible boyfriend to which I can communicate, feel, listen to, have really good, good advice given to me. I'm in a place where I know it's gonna pass and this is just probably a phase, but it's still very much how I'm feeling right now. And if I didn't speak about it and get it off my chest, some might think it's oversharing. I would almost feel like I was living a lie because I, I don't wanna portray like, oh, I'm so untouchable and so happy all the time and so positive and like a fucking rainbow when really the reality of everybody's life is that we all go through these phases where something might trigger a negative thought or a feeling and then it kind of, everything else comes to the surface. And we all have these moments of self-destructive thought processes and intrusive thoughts and it's really normal. I just know that I need to remain. When so I like think about these things that I think about, process them and acknowledge that like the actual truth, when you're in a negative mindset, it changes how you see things and yourself. When I'm in a good mood, I don't feel like this. I'm like, that's a stupid thought. As if I felt like that, that's dumb. Ugh. Of course you do stuff. Of course you've got a job. Of course this is your career. This is fucking 2024. Like, times are different. This isn't a traditional job. You work, you put the hours in, you do the planning, the prep. You know, you, put, you do all that stuff. You work long days, get paid for it. That's a job. Likewise, with all the other things I've been worried about, there's like, yeah, well, you haven't really been applying yourself to the 10 weeks as, as hard as you were last time, this time last year. You know? 
perspective, perspective, honesty, truth, acknowledgement, accountability, all of that is very important because I've been feeling a bit shit. The sun is out, at all, it has already made me feel a bit better. That's another thing, time of year. The time of year, I fucking hate winter so much. <laughs> I hate it. I miss my garden being alive and walking down every morning with my coffee and speaking to the plants. I miss the long days of sunshine. I miss the heat on my skin. I miss the sun. I miss the big blue skies. I miss going to the beach on the weekend and going in the sea. I miss all the things that I did last year in the summer. Like, ah! Winter's boring and long and damp and dreary and miserable and it's so... <sighs> Fuck off, winter. So I'm taking the dogs to a lovely, one of our favorite little walks that we go on, Whitlingham Lake. And I'm gonna walk and I'm gonna not have my headphones in, I'm gonna listen to the sounds. I'm just going to have a pleasant walk. Geese are noisy, aren't they? I also acknowledge, and I know some people are bored to death of hearing about it, <laughs> but having ADHD, one of the traits of, of that is being incredibly self-critical and um, not oh, quite nasty to yourself. There's lots of ducks. Leave me alone, I'm scared. All right, duck. <laughs> right, duck. It's flooded. They're like, oh, it's flooded. It's flooded. Bloody hell. Trying to search for things to make you feel satisfied, fulfilled, um, giving you that, you know, that dopamine hit and nothing seems to be working. It's, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, I am a positive soul. I find life great and wonderful and I see, I love to see the good in everything and everyone. And my boyfriend tells me that I've got like this kind of childish naivety slash endearingness, which makes, which is quite innocent, but is, brings sort of joy to the world and a sense of positivity, which I, I get, I understand that, where it's coming from. Another thing is that kind of expectation to be like that all the time. Getting over mental hurdles, i.e. no, I can't take myself off this sofa because I feel terrible, or no, I'm not gonna to go to the gym because I feel terrible. Battling through those mental hurdles is super hard, but super important. Sometimes it is good to just have a little sit and a little sad or stay in bed a little, little longer. But I think when you find yourself, when you, when you find yourself doing it more than you should be, or more than you like to be, or it's becoming a habit, that's when it's time to rethink some stuff and go, right, something's not right. So I'm here, out in the wild, by the water, listening to the sound of the ducks, <laughs> a train, but no, the trees, my footsteps and the dogs pit a pair need to be it's grounding and it's nice and it's getting away from that is a loud train that is one way to clear those cobwebs <laughs>